This is just an example of some group of people who were able to take and they were able to bring their village back from where it had reached. Like they said that uh, we were ashamed to say that we are from Hilde Bajar, these students. And then now there, there are some people who put Hilde Bajar in front of their own name. <laughs> that I am from Hilde Bajar, so there, this much of change is there in about, uh, about 15 years or so it has taken that. <coughs> so that is a little bit about that village. If you go through uh, some more examples and then see, then we can spend some more time in discussion. Unless there is something you know, immediate that you want to share, that you observe with this. Is there anything in India? Yes. So they are making the policy and procedure for their immediate implementation, immediate action, that purpose only they train. Yeah. Not for the long term. Yeah. That is the reason they have successfully they achieved their goal. Yeah. Uh, that is certainly there, you know, that what was discussed in the last session. Yeah, I, I have, uh, I have, just for, for right now. <laughs> yeah. So, see what was discussed in the last session about having a overall uh, view of you know what the solution should be, and then working towards that that part. Is that if we have an idea about temporary activity would be to ensure that this holistic solution is understood in its totality by everybody, particularly those who may not have fully understood it. That is why the problem was there to start with. So this would be the long term, you know, ensuring this, this first part, this one. 
But if there is a problem that has to be solved, cannot yield it. So this, but this would be temporary thing to do, not something that we will wait for the problem to happen, then we'll see what to do with it. So what we are seeing in some of the villages around where we are staying in Kanpur, these are three villages. And the examples that uh, Ganesh skipped some examples. One of the examples was for sugar cane price. Yeah. So I'll share those two also. This one and the, that example also. What we can see, this survey around where we are was done by the students who belong to those villages. And this has been validated by their elders in the village. So this is what is their own finding. So if we are for example doing any project, socially relevant project, could be find out what is happening around you. So that we are really connected to where we are living versus being isolated from where we are living. We don't know who is staying in the village next door. We only go there to take or some things. And we don't know who lives there. So we can find out what is their state of being and contribute in that. So this was done about six or seven years back. And there is constant interaction with these villages. In the beginning of, no, it was last year. Last year there was this panchayat election in the village. There were about 500 Pradhans who were selected, village heads. And we spoke to 100% of them. We spent about 3 hours speaking to each, I mean all the Pradhans. There were 3, you know, groups, 4 groups and we went and spent time with them. Out of those 500 Pradhans, we had 3 day workshop for those, you know, ones who were interested, about 100 of them. And about 35, 40 of them came for a day workshop also. And then two Pradhans, they are working in their village to try to implement these set of goals. But this was the state of affairs to sort of start with. So you can see it is not a problem of physical resources. It is a problem of this that they are not able to rightly utilize the physical resources that are there. It's not a problem of you know, not having enough to eat or all that. So in this Ibn Bajar also you would have noticed that when people get together, they are able to do many things without having to look for government aid and aid from some you know, agency. There, you know. there is enough around us for us to be you know, prosperous. There is enough labor in us if we are willing to do that, have that mindset to put in that much of effort ourselves. What is happening with this education is that most of the people who go through this education are not doing any primary production. They are not even doing secondary production. They are busy in some tertiary, if at all. Otherwise, the you know, feeling is that if I have to do some work, I will otherwise you know, let things come my way, all the best of things, with least effort. That is the kind of mindset. But if we have this mindset that we are responsible and we can you know, put in the effort, we can produce enough and we can be prosperous with our own labor. If you see in Bhutan also we were discussing, for each person, for each family of 10, there is 180 acres of land. If we take the total land, if we take 7% of that, which is the arable land, it comes to about 13 acres per, per family of 10. And if we take only 3% of that, that also comes to about 5 point something, so 6 acres of for family of 10. Whereas what we have found 
that two acres is sufficient for a family of ten people. And you can see, is it enough or not enough? Are we putting in labor or not? Or are we just sitting and expecting somebody else to produce and we will give them money and we will take? What are we doing? So we can see that. So what I am trying to say here is that in this survey that we did for the villages around, we could see that you know, it takes some time for the effort that is happening in <coughs> like Hilwe Bazaar. It will result in physical facility. But unless work is done on this, it will end up over here. In fact, now we found that you know this 50 motorcycles is actually about 80 to 90 motorcycles, and six motorcycles are used to go to the job. All the rest of them are just sitting there. I also have a motorcycle. That's about it. So they are trying to fulfill that need of left hand side with something uh, which belongs to right hand side. So it is like that. So we can see. And we can see all these things that in, in our country you can see you know, that so many children are dying every day. problem of production or it is a problem that we are not concerned. We have made this boundary. This is my family. And these are other people. They are not mine. So I am exploiting these people. Without right understanding, even in my family, I am not able to ensure good health. I keep on bringing that over here. And what was discussed was that if they are able to understand what is relationship in family, what is the meaning of harmony in family, then this goes away because this, this goes away. It is, everybody is part of my family and there is no exploitation, etc. I am nurturing a bit, I think about nurturing a bit. I can do that only when I am feeling prosperous. I cannot think of doing that without that. But this is what is the current state of affairs at India level, at uh, global level. And see, you know, and that uh, uh, Tasha Shere was talking about that pictures about the Ethiopia. Yeah. We are seeing all that. So we can see we are stuck with you know, these kind of instead of these goals, we are sort of having so many assumptions like money is everything very important. We end up <coughs> accumulating more and more money, more and more physical facility. And in society, we can see this domination and exploitation. And in nature, we are seeing, you know, we are trying to do mastery over nature. Nature is, it, you will call it natural resource, human resource, and natural resource. And we are busy in this program. Consumption, profit, madness for profit, and sensual pleasure. Those are diversions. Because what has happened? As an individual, we have made this assumption physical facility and sensation is the main purpose of my life. All this other stuff is good, nice, you know, theoretical. 
but this is practical. This is what our assumption is. So as individual, there is unhappiness. If I am unhappy, I make the other person also unhappy. I don't have to give, I can give only what I have. So if I am unhappy and confused, I can only pass that on. That's why what I asked yesterday, are you able to observe you know, reaction, is it increasing or decreasing in the students and in the teachers? Over the you know, last few years, so we can observe that. Because we are making these wrong assumptions and then busy in this program. And at an individual level, at a family level, it looks like this, but at a so social level, world level, it looks like this. And we can see that. Rasha was sharing that you know, there is lack of water in even the places that were, you know, the crops, we are not able to see because we have sort of assumed that rice is the, you know, crop of the, you know, advanced people, so we have to eat only rice. All the rest of the crop, which takes less water, we are not even able to sell it now, even if we produce it. Why? So we made so many wrong assumptions for this. We are busy doing these things. So we can see on lots of material is there where we can see the problem of this part. Just the problem. But that's not helpful. You can see it all over the place. This case is where the government is, you know, bankrupt and they have taken loan and the bank is saying that you know you privatize this airline, privatize this, privatize that and give it to my people. And uh, this is very sort of, I won't show you this, you, I will give it to you, you can see it later on. Are we working towards solution or we are still working in that small circle, you know, this one? This solution, this solution, this type of solution where we take loan and try to do. Instead of working ourselves into the solution, being able to see my role in the solution. So we can see and we can share our observations about the What do you think? That was something which is encouraging or it's interesting for you. What did you observe in that? Yeah. I'm sorry I take this opportunity now. <laughs> for the two reasons, uh, we in the video of Kuhle Bajar, I live in, in the same state, Maharashtra. My Dunkar name is Aurangabad. Yeah. My district name, Aurangabad. Same district. And, <laughs> it's neighboring district. Yeah, that is Ahmed Nagar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is Ahmed Nagar, my neighboring district. Uh, I have a very different impression of Ahmed Nagar before watching this video. I knew in Bihura Bajar, I had been there. Even in the same place Ahmed Nagar, there is another very popular town and every person sitting here knows that town because of one gentleman. His name is Anna Hadani. So his town is also in the same district. Raleigh City. Raleigh City. Raleigh City. So that town is also like, like a Hebrew Bajar. <coughs> we neighboring district has a, has a kind of a competition. If you, if you do the Google search uh, for the fastest growing industrial town in Asia, fastest growing industrial town in Asia, in most of the websites, my district reflect number one, Aurangabad. And I was very proud for that. <laughs> uh, but now after seeing this video, uh, you know in the morning we have seen the two that. Last time when I went uh, 
to my hometown for the uh, you know during the vacation. I have already seen a lot of places, and uh, the liver of my city has has damaged. You know, I I could give you so many different examples how it has damaged. I mean, so-called demolished infrastructure, so-called modern private schools. But uh, there's a lot of discrimination between the upper class and the and the lower class. The kind of peace, sanctity, and harmony uh, we used to have in Aurangabad, uh, let's say 20, 25, 30 years ago, uh, it has gone now. And uh, many of those interesting stories which my parents shared about my city that has become a fantasy or a fairy tale uh, for me. Um, I'm giving you like, like, this, this example. Because still in the afternoon, I was thinking, okay, as we go with the speed of this, uh, the, the, the previous side has a word gutka. I don't know how many people have understood it. But gutka is basically a pouch, a small pouch, and you have written nuts and the tobacco mix in it. And uh, yeah, I'll give the reference of the gutka. But the two neighboring district, you see the big difference. Aurangabad is the fastest industrial town. And the other, where you can see the human index, you know, maybe one of the top ranking human index in, in, the, in the world. Uh, about, like, my, 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 I was thinking whether can we, if we reach to this human value, can you follow me, can we implement it? Even uh, me and my students were discussing the same thing before the lunch. You know, uh, my students had a, had a problem, uh, question. They, said, they asked me, uh, sir, what do you think? Uh, can, uh, can we change? So simply I asked him a question. You ask this question with simply, you know, instead of putting we, can I change? And he said, yes, sir. And then the other student also said, yes, sir. Then I said, I can also change. So now we can change. <laughs> so this is how, and I, I see simply the, you know, because uh, the state of Maharashtra has recently declared a uh, ban on the Vika. I hope uh, like many people are aware of it and uh, they are following it very strictly. It's not only said in the consumption and the production of the good car, but even if the truck passes through the state and if the police catches the truck with the good car, they have been fine. So, yeah, maybe I thought it's going to take 100, 200 years. I was talking to Sami sir, uh, uh, maybe not in my generation but my next generation, but he has an optician for the world generation. He said, when you say generation, you are talking about yourself and yourself is going to remain. So I said, in this body, in this physical body, I may not be able to see the change, but I was wrong. I think uh, we all can see the changes. Very soon we all can see the changes. Thank you. I just would like to relate a small experience uh, to that. Uh, in Pondicherry, in my place, uh, I live in a flat kind of uh, arrangement. There are 194 flats. And for the past uh, five years or so, uh, we, have been, uh, we have been there, but uh, uh, nobody knows each other, so we are so, we are so busy. And just next to my block, uh, we have a uh, so busy with what? So busy with uh, <laughs> as you say, uh, concerning about our own country. So I used to I used to go home only for a period of two months, and during that time, if I am doing something for the people around, my wife naturally will say that you are wasting a lot of time on others, and you are not giving your time for us. So that is, I think, a natural reason. So we have a small uh, area, little more than one acre, which is for children's park. And uh, all the under 94 houses, they were coming and throwing their garbage there. <laughs> and uh, I even spent money once, uh, got hold of the municipal councillor and got an excavator, got the place cleaned up and uh, told them, okay, now that I have spent money, you please maintain it. And I said, okay, anybody wants to contribute also, I made a council and then told them, okay, you can collect the money and do that. And, uh, to do. But everybody was so, uh, what to say now, so like a uh, physical facility like what we now know, that uh, 
they were really bothered. But this time uh, when I went, I was bent upon, I, I think I followed what uh, uh, we saw in the movie. I gathered all of them and I had uh, repeated meetings, meetings after meetings, every Sunday meetings. I said I'll sponsor the tea and snacks. At least for the tea and snacks you please come. <laughs> so I called them and then we had meetings. I said that this is not going to go on. We need to keep our surroundings clean. We need to keep that place clean. Uh, at least let us use it for car parking because all the cars were standing on the road. And anybody, anyone coming inside was a dead end road. Anybody coming inside was very difficult. If anybody is having a heart attack, wanted to get an ambulance, the ambulance has no way to come inside. <laughs> so citing such reasons, I told them and I said, okay, fine, I'll also, yeah, and then I paid money and I told them also 500 bucks each, that's the donate. Then again, we got the place cleaned up and now it's uh, all clean. The road is clean and we are ha all having the car parking. Every now and then I ring up my friends and I ask them, hey, what's happening? Are the cars standing there or is the garbage flowing from or being thrown from the rooftop? Because that is a common thing. So uh, it, it's good that uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, you know, village, like this thing has come up. And uh, it's uh, my lesson, what I learned from this lesson and what I learned from my experience is this. We need to meet regularly. Exactly. We need to meet, need to meet regularly. Today afternoon also the HOC, my Madam Dada was here. We are all here Indians here. We have problems, but we never tell anybody. And uh, there we were sitting. Somebody came up with the problem. I said, okay, this is a solution immediately. Like, okay, this is what we do and this is what should be done. So we need to meet. We are so busy in our own world with our rotis and chapatis and washing clothes <laughs> and washing machines. So that we are uh, not at all concerned or bothered about anything. I think that's an important thing that uh, yeah. I feel so. Okay. So what you are saying is that we are busy with physical facility. Yes. <coughs> and that relationship is also important. This communication, this discussion is also a source of happiness, a source of solution. That is also very important. It's important, very important. And we are undermining all that. So we, we can see you know, lots of things about Yuri Bazaar. So I'll just skip to this point that uh, it's a good example. And Kopato Pawarji has he's been made a state minister, he's been given responsibility to you know, work on more villages. And they are trying to you know, do that. But it's very difficult to replicate this model. It's having quite a hard time. People who are from there, they are able to tell us that. It, is, uh, it needs somebody who is concerned about that place, in that place, to you know, work it out with the people who are living there. So it's a very good attempt. So I'll share one more example. There is a cluster of villages in Tamil Nadu and uh, what they have tried to do is this that they are trying to work on network economy where the medium of exchange is not money but it is <coughs> physical facility for physical facility. The amount of money transaction is very, very small now in this class. We have, we met actually, you know, the head of this one, uh, Langoji, Lango Ramaswamy. Mm -hmm. So, this is what they have done, you know, that they have taken these 15 to 20 villages and they have tried to make a network. One village will produce something, another village will produce something else, etc. and they will exchange it within themselves. They are participating in, you know, able to find out what do we need as a, you know, as a group and then work towards <coughs> finding a way to produce it 
most of the production they are able to do in the village itself. So they are not dependent on outside. So there are some examples. Uh, I'm not able to read from here, so I'll 